You know, many people say you only have to be right 51% of the time and you make money. You know, that only works in a casino. In a casino, it's okay because you have a house advantage and if it's like 51% to 49, you make money over time. But in investing, it's not like that. It's a completely different system. You have to be right not only 51%, but most likely at least 90% or possibly 95% or even more in order to make money on a consistent basis over a very, very long period of time, over many years, decades. You know, otherwise you'll be losing money. Now when people ask, you know, do you have to be right all the time uh, when it comes to investments, the answer is yes. Sounds maybe cocky or arrogant, you know, but the reality is if you're not right most of the time, and I mean most of the time, like 90%, 95% or more of the time, you will lose money. There's no way around it. See, your profits might be small sometimes, they can also be big but your losses are usually much, much bigger than your smallest profits. So because you're waiting, you made a wrong decision and so forth. Now when we invest, you know, we have to be sure that our investment is a definite thing, meaning a no-brainer, so to speak, meaning you can't lose. You say, but it's speculation. Yeah, speculation is guesswork for the most part. What we do is analysis, we make sure that all the numbers are correct, you know, and we uh, evaluate the risk-reward ratio. Now, the reward ratio has to be uh, completely out of bounds compared to the risk, meaning it has to be such a high reward, meaning that it, it's really a no-brainer and almost a guaranteed um, thing that the, the, so that the risk is minimal or non-existent virtually. Now, on risk-reward, the, the issue is this. Many people, you know, they say, well, you got a potential of doubling and losing maybe 50%. You know, that's a very bad risk-reward ratio. For us, that something works, I need to have at least a 1,000% upside. You know, 500% maybe works. And the risk on the downside can be like 20, 30%. Now, in certain days, we had certain years where even the best investors in the world lost virtually 50% in the bad, bad years. You know, that's a different scenario. But in general, you know, our risk can only be max 30%. That's it, you know. But it has to be outweighed by the reward of 500 to 1,000% over a certain time. Is there volatility? Of course there is. But so we need to figure out the perfect or the exact entry point. And you can never get the total bottom necessarily, but if you do the proper analysis, if you have the proper um, model, you can pretty much uh, have the, a, a very exact entry point. Now, can anyone be wrong in the stock market in investing? Of course we can be wrong. But to eliminate that fact of being wrong, we eliminate emotions. See, many people are very emotional. When uh, we go to the uh, uh, do analysis, we're not emotional. We just analyze the facts, and that means numbers. And there's probability in there, that's true, but also a lot of data, you know. So emotional, you can be emotional when you sell your position, you take a profit, you know, that's when you can get excited, and that's, that's your emotion. But making the trading decision, the investment decision, there's nothing emotional about it. You have to eliminate emotions. Now, I love it when people always defend their positions, you know. And, <laughs> it, of course, there's two sides to a trade or investment decision. You have a positive and you have a negative, meaning some speculate the stock will go up, others speculate that the stock will go down on the one hand. Now, I don't care, you know, you can defend your position in a certain stock or in a certain uh, equity position, who cares, you know, it, it doesn't really matter to us. If we have done our analysis, that's what it will be, you know, and if we're wrong, of course we can be wrong, and sometimes we are wrong, then we have to take the measures, take the loss, you know, and that's it, and move on. The bottom line is you cannot be emotional when it comes to investing. You have to go by the numbers, and it's very boring to some extent. On the other hand, it's uh, you can be exciting too, but you have to eliminate emotions. You have to stay objective so you make the best possible decision and evaluate properly, meaning so that reward is in a certain uh, relationship to the risk, meaning minimal risk, 
maximum reward. And only if you're comfortable and if it seems to be like a no-brainer, that's when you get involved. Otherwise, you know, it's not even worth the shot. You know, you better wait. And that's also part of the game to just wait and be patient and then enter at the right point. Now we all have to take steps of faith, you know, and that means that we analyze the thing and then we have to engage at the proper time, but only engage in a position when it seems to be the right time. If it's not the right time, it's not the right investment. You know, you have to feel comfortable. It has to be a no-brainer. And there's tons of examples I could name, you know, which are total no-brainers. Now, I can give you a few examples of no-brainers. Like we had March 2009, early March 2009. Everybody was <laughs> speaking about total bankruptcy of everything, banks and so forth. You know, it's a scary moment, but hey, if everything goes bankrupt, whatever, you know. But we were down 99% in many, many stocks. Not 90%, 95 to 99% in their stock, in their former highs. So it was a no-brainer, you know, the housing stocks, the financials, all those things. You know, if everything goes down, well, then it's over anyway. So it was a time as a no-brainer to buy that market. And there was virtually no risk. You know, everybody was talking about risk, but there's no risk. Either everything falls apart and everything goes down, or we're going to come out <laughs> and come through this and make money. And then within uh, only about eight weeks from early March 2009 to early May 2009, uh, our portfolio increased by 180%, you know, within eight weeks. And, uh, you know, if you stay longer, you make more money. But, you know, in our case, you know, two months, 180%, you take your profits. Another no-brainer was, for instance, Netflix in August of 2012. The stock was trading around 63, it was dirt cheap, all based upon market cap. You know, that's how we do our calculations, based, calculations based on potential market cap in the future or comparative market cap to other companies in the industry for instance another and so that was a uh, that stock went up like 700 percent since then uh, before the last correction so it from 63 i think it went to over 460 or so anyway another no-brainer was tesla motors in early may 2013 you know we didn't like the roadster but we did like uh, the four-door sedan the model s that they just became popular and so forth and they just uh, came rolling out so that was a no-brainer at 55 bucks and in the meanwhile we know the stock hit 265 within a year a little over a year and uh, before the recent correction too you know so it took a little more than a year for to, to basically uh, more than quadruple almost quintuple so that that was a no-brainer not a no-brainer